Um, this video, we're making an exposure triangle graphic using a image already um, downloaded of taken by your master photographer here. Um, I'm using the boy with the grenade. Um, it's totally up to you which image you'd like to choose, but you might want to pick one that is a little bit higher res. Um, so for my example, my picture in pixels is about 1500 pixels. So this is a good minimum number, I would think, like the lowest one you'd want. So find a higher res image. It's easier to figure out the ISO. Um, but we're going to take this picture and turn it into a graphic like this. So I've masked out this triangle uh, shape here. So the child appears behind a triangle mask. And then we've added some text and labeled it. So pretty easy. Um, let's start with the triangle. We'll go back to Photoshop. And we're going to come over here to the left-hand side of Photoshop where you see this little square rectangle thing. Click and hold on that. And you want to choose the polygon tool. Uh, polygon tool. I think by default it's a hexagon. Uh, you want to make sure on the very top here, under sides, you have three sides for the triangle. Um, so likely yours is a little different. And also want to make sure that rather than create a shape, we want our polygon tool to create a path. So very important here. Path needs to be selected and three sides needs to be selected. Um, so in order to make the triangle, you just click and drag. Um, if you click and drag, notice it is like a freeform triangle. I'm going to go up. Notice when I drag up, it kind of creates the um, point at the very top, which is what we want. Uh, it's up to you. If you want your triangle to be upside down, I don't mind. But as long as it's square, so as long as like the bottom or the top has a flat side. Uh, and what I mean by that, to get that flat side, I am going to start roughly kind of in the middle of this child and We'll start at his knees here, and then click and drag up. And notice it's free form, but if I hold down the shift key while you drag up, it will snap into place. So we make a triangle that roughly fits him. Okay. Uh, in order to move this triangle, you have to use the arrow down here, not the move tool, but the A arrow. Um, you can switch to that by hitting the A key, but this is called the path selection tool. So. Remember, we just made a path, so now I'm going to use this arrow path selection tool to move my path around. So this, everything that fits inside the triangle is going to show up in my graphic. Everything outside will become transparent. So now I'm going to, once you have your triangle selected, you can hold down the uh, layer menu here. Look under layer mask. Let's see, vector mask here. We're going to make a vector mask out of the current path, which is that triangle. And look what it does. It creates a little mask. It attaches it. It's a little chain to my layer. And now I've got uh, my image masked. Um, awesome. Next thing I'd like to do is change crop. So we'll go to the crop tool and kind of fix some of this. Make it more even. OK, I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit return. Um, another kind of feature that's cool is you can unlink this and that lets you actually move the boy around in the mask itself. So I had to do the, I had to click on the little chain here. Um, but if you click on the chain, it lets you with the move tool, move the boy around like so. If you want more of his foot to show, that's good. I'm going to click back on the chain so that locks these two down. Uh, next thing, I don't like the checkerboard, so I'm going to make a new layer by clicking on the little page icon here to make a new layer. Right now that layer is on the top. I'm going to drag it to the bottom. And now we'll use the paint bucket tool to fill in this area. If you don't have the paint bucket tool here, it's under the gradient tool. So if you click and hold on gradient, choose paint bucket. Uh, white is my foreground color, so when I click here in my layer one, it's going to fill that whole layer with white. From here, it's just adding text. So the top thing of text I want you to write is name of the artist, Diane Arbus. Exposure triangle. 
Uh, remember when you bring your mouse away from the text, you can move it. That's kind of nice. Um, I'm going to increase the size of the text. So I triple clicked on all the text and then I'll just click and drag to the right on these T, uh, two little T's up here. Move it over. I'm going to look back at my original graphic here. Eh, it could be a little bigger. So your font size choices are going to be different than mine. Uh, don't try and copy mine because depending on the resolution of your picture, it's going to be a little different. Um, I kind of like this whoops, 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 gray color for the text. That's good. Um, I'm going to add another line of text. And this is child. So this is the name of the photo, child with toy hand grenade Central Park, New York City, comma, 1962. Okay, so I typed all that out. I'm going to make it smaller. Center it. So because this is the title of a photograph, we are going to make the actual title italicized. So all this medium oblique, they call it. And the date will not be italicized. So that's that. So I've got the name of your artist, exposure triangle, the name of the photo below it, and the date. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. So it looks like both of my text layers are slightly to the right. I'm going to select both of them, use the move tool, whoops, scoot them over. I'm just going to use the arrows, just eyeballing this. Okay. Awesome. Um, next thing we need to do is put our settings in. So I think that this was shot at f1.8. So I'm going to grab my type tool and type out f slash 1.8. Highlight all that. This, of course, needs to be bigger and thicker. Let's do heavy. Oh, heavy. Black is actually even thicker. That's good. I'm going to look at my original graphic. Oh, we're going to write aperture. Aperture. F1.8. OK. Now, a couple of different ways of making new text. I'm going to copy my text. So click and drag, or right click on the layer, choose duplicate layer. Now I'll move that type down here. ISO, I thought it was 400 based on the graininess. It was kind of grainy, but not super grainy. So that's kind of how I came up with that number. Um, are we doing all caps? I'm going to do all caps. Whoops. So let's go back to my type tool. Okay. Shutter speed. Make a new layer of text here. Grab my type tool. Whoops. Move this over. Okay, so because shutter speed is my biggest piece of text, I'm going to put this on the bottom. Um, ISO we'll put over here, an aperture over here. Um, now the challenge is to line up this text with this angle, this ISO with this angle. Um, shutter speed is great. It's already lined up straight. I'm happy with that. So I'll keep that there. Um, now I need to use free transform to transform this text to rotate it. So we're going to do Command T and we'll just rotate it this way. Kind of hard to tell. It doesn't look like it's right. I'm going to click and drag the text closer to line it up better. It's definitely not on. Okay. So bring your cursor inside the box, the free transform box to scale it. You could also use the arrow keys 
And I'm going to get this real lined up here. You might have to turn off snap under the view menu. That is lined up. Move it down. I'm using my arrow keys to move this. Okay, awesome. Uh, I'm going to hit the move tool to set that text, apply that transformation. And now we need to change the ISO layer, transform that, Command T, rotate, move it in closer, check the alignment. Good enough. And apply. Uh, I'm going to actually scoot that in a little more. Like so. Wow, I'm happy with this. I like it. Um, one kind of quick way to add a border to something is to uh, increase the canvas size. So I want to make a border with the same color. So I'll use the eyedropper tool, which is here, to sample the color from my text, which I likely sampled from the picture itself. Now I'm going to use the crop tool and let's just increase the crop a little bit around each edge here so it is snapping it's gonna give me kind of a larger border because of that that's okay hit return to set your crop um, and now it's kind of easy you can just grab your paint bucket tool and if you're on layer one because you have enough space to work with you can just click in there could have also made a bottom layer as well and filled that. So there's my exposure triangle. Because um, I'm crazy, I'm going to make it a little smaller so the border's a little smaller. Save this as a JPEG. And you're going to put this in the top of your post. This is not really an exact way of doing this, but oh well. I like it. File, save as Arbus exposure triangle under JPEG. Remember, quality should be 10. 10. Click OK. And you're set. Um, might as well show you the website while we're here. I think I've got it up. Basically, what you're going to do is. Um, do I have it here? Yeah. So I've got my exposure triangle, the title of my site. Um, you don't need a header image. So at the very top, I've put my exposure triangle graphic. And then below that are my test GIFs. So I have determined based on these GIFs what I think Diane Arbus's exposure was. Um, and basically when you do this, you're going to add a caption below each image. So I'm going to um, let's get rid of this. Rid of that. So I'm going to insert an image and look up aperture GIF. I think, do I have the finished thing here? Shutter GIF. No, so we're going to use the shutter GIF example. Delete this. Insert an image. Shutter GIF example. Select. Okay. Um, first of all, I want this to be centered. So we'll drag it to the center. And you can also make it larger by clicking and dragging and expanding it. Um, one cool thing that I've figured out. Okay, so it's about the same size. Uh, you can add a caption directly below an image. So if you select the image, click on the little triple circle here, choose add caption. And this is how I want you to caption the pictures, just a real short description, um, what you think this GIF tells you about your image. So I'm going to say, um, due to the lack of any motion blur in Arbus's photo, I believe she likely shot with a toy hand 
grenade at 1 to 50th of a second. That's it. Um, what did I write up here for ISO? ISO is difficult to tell. Based on looking in a close-up of hand grenade, I believe Arbus used film that was closer to ISO 100. Um, another thing, too, is with these images... Oh, wow, well, fine. Let's see. Yep. Um, I will show you inserting the images can get kind of tricky. Okay, uh, I got a little interrupted there. So I wanted to show you what happens when you add a picture. Let's click on images. I've got my exposure triangle graphic that I want on top. Um, first, let's arrange the order. So I want test GIFs to be below this. So we'll drag this up here. Okay. Um, so now I want to make this bigger, right? It's kind of small right now. So I'm going to click and drag it. And notice that as you drag, it starts to crop the image. Um, which is not that great. So we're going to make it kind of big here. Scroll down. If you kind of aim it down. Okay. But I, if you play with this before, you'll notice it's just weird. Um, make it a little smaller. Okay. So what, what, uh, sites does is it crops the image. So now when you select your picture, you have these image options to either crop it or uncrop it. So once you've done this, gotten the size and position you like, choose uncrop, and then it will kind of just snap into place. So that's it. You've got your exposure triangle on top, your test GIFs that are captioned, and then the original image on the bottom. Um, so that's it. Hope you liked it. Um, hopefully you are our exposure master now. Um, and that is all. Thank you very much.